Thank you everyone for joining our session. I am talking about how you can elevate your customers' productivity with features from the new release. I'm Carrie Carroza with Newview Strategies, and I'm very excited to share these tips with you. In this session, I will be covering some very specific features and also demoing how each of these can be used. And I'll be demoing these in Business Central. Keep in mind that these are newer features over the last few releases. So some of these you may have seen before and some of them may be new to you. In this session, we'll take a few minutes to explore each of these features in a little bit more depth. My goal is that you have some takeaways that you can share with your customers so that they can work more productively in the system and that they can work with less frustration. I have to say, I'm really excited about this one. We'll now be able to allow lines with amounts of zero on recurring general journals to post. This is just a screenshot of an error message that you might have seen previously. So on the recurring general journal, if you had a line that had a $0 amount for that journal, you were not able to post it. So we get an error message saying that the amount must have a value in whatever that line is. It cannot be zero or empty. So options previously might be to just delete that line and then add it back for the next time you might need to post that journal. Or you could filter that $0 line out of view, post the recurring journal, remove the filter, and then make sure that you checked and updated the date on that line that had been removed so that it matched all of the other lines. That's a lot of additional work, and this often prevented users from utilizing recurring journals for journals where maybe they should be using recurring journals, but they sometimes have those $0 lines and don't want to use one of those workarounds. So they may just use a general journal instead. But we now have the ability to be able to post those $0 lines without any error messages. So I am in Business Central now in my recurring general journal screen, and I can see that I do in fact have a $0 line. And I'm going to attempt to post this recurring journal with that $0 line visible. And we can see that I was able to post that $0 line without deleting the line, without removing it from the filtered view. And that means that my posting date for all of the lines has now updated based on my recurring frequency. Yay! You might be interested, though, to know if it actually is posting that $0 line through to your general ledger. So let's go look at the general ledger entries. And I'm going to add a filter on the document number of wages. So I can see that I do have my journal entry at 131, as well as my reversal on 21. But you'll notice that I am not seeing any $0 general ledger lines that resulted from posting that recurring journal with the $0 line amount. Also, yay, this is something that is probably very exciting for a lot of users that have been using the system previously. And I'm hoping that this will convince more users that they really should be using recurring general journals for anything that is a repeating journal entry. Another feature that users might be excited about is the ability to assign a salesperson code to customer ship to addresses. Right now in Business Central, I'm on my customer card of the fantastic customer who always pays on time. And on my customer of fantastic customer, I can see that the salesperson code is HR or Helena Ray. So she is the main salesperson for this customer. I've also set up some additional ship to addresses for this customer. And if I look at those, I can see I have a main warehouse in Milwaukee and I have a Michigan location in Lansing. So let's go ahead and click into that main warehouse. And I can see that I don't see salesperson code on this ship to address card. So what I need to do is I actually need to go to personalize my page and see if I can find that field to add it in. And I can see salesperson code is here. So let's go ahead and let's drag that over. And I'll click on done for personalization. And now you can see that I have the ability for this main warehouse location to also assign a salesperson code. So let's go ahead and let's assign Jim. And what we're saying is that Helena is the main salesperson for this customer. But when we use the ship to address of main warehouse, the salesperson is actually going to be Jim. I can also go to my Michigan ship to address and I can assign a different salesperson for that. So let's go ahead and assign Benjamin. So for each ship to address, you can assign a different salesperson code. 
And I can see that for this customer, I have an ongoing sales order. So let's go ahead and navigate there. So on this very large order, we can see that the customer is purchasing 5,000 Athens desks and the salesperson code is HR from the customer card. Now let's go ahead and collapse the lines. And under the shipping and billing tab, I'm going to select a different ship to address. So we're going to select the main warehouse. And when I update that shipping address, you can see that the salesperson code also now updates to Jim. When I change that shipping address again, I can see that because the Michigan location ship to address card has Benjamin assigned, the salesperson code also updates to Benjamin. So this is really nice now to have the option to associate a salesperson code other than the main salesperson on the customer card with those individual ship to addresses at the customer. There are also some improvements around record details and both viewing information about records and sharing information about records. One improvement is the ability to show related record details from a lookup. So I'd like to demonstrate what this means. In Business Central, I'm on a purchase invoice and I've added an item to that purchase invoice. Now, if I click on the drop down for the item number, I can see that I get my list of items with some very minimal information, but I also now have this option here to show details. And this will show me details on the related record. So when I click on show details, I'm taken to that item card so that I can look at any of the additional corresponding information from here. Previously, we had to click on a whole bunch of different options to be able to navigate to the item card to get that additional information. So what this is doing is it's allowing that user to more easily navigate there with less clicks. The other improvement that I'd like to share is the ability to share readable deep links to pages and records. And again, I'd like to demonstrate what that actually means. So back in my purchase invoice in Business Central, if I want to share this record with someone else in my company internally, I can either copy the URL link or I can go to this little icon right here and I can share to Teams directly or I can just go ahead and copy that link. And you'll notice that it says only users who already have permission will be able to view that page. And that's fine. I'm going to send it to someone in an email internally. So I can go ahead and I can copy that link. And now I'll navigate to my new email to paste that link. And in my email, when I paste the link, it's in a nice format and the user who is on the other end of this email can very easily tell what it is that they're looking at. The screenshot that you're seeing is directly from learn.microsoft and the link is below on this slide. And you can see that this is just an example of how those links will be formatted and what they will say based on the type of record that you're on. So for example, if you are on an open filtered view on your sales order list, the hyperlink caption that you see when you paste that link is going to be sales orders dash open. Again, just some improvements to the usability of sharing information. And then also for those users who are receiving the links, it's easier for them to know exactly what it is that they're looking at. Next, I'd like to cover allocation accounts, which are a newer functionality. But in some cases, this can actually go hand in hand with statistical accounts. So I'm going to first cover statistical accounts, which was a newer functionality uh, somewhat recently, but not in most recent wave releases. Statistical accounts give us the ability to keep track of things in an organization that may not necessarily need to be general ledger accounts with general ledger entries. An example of this might be an employee headcount in your company. In Business Central, I am in the statistical accounts page, and this is just some demo data that Microsoft has given us. So let's look around a little bit in these accounts. First, we have employees, and this statistical account is to track the number of employees. Now I can see that we do have a balance similar to how we would have on a GL account. And I can drill into this balance, and that will show me the different statistical account ledger entries within the statistical account. Keep in mind that these are statistical account ledger entries and there is no general ledger impact by posting these entries. Let's go into our statistical account of employees and we have some different options on our action bar. We can open the statistical accounts journal to make an entry. We can view the dimensions or the dimension requirements on this statistical account. 
So for example, if I'm tracking the number of employees in each department, what I might want to do is I might want to make the department dimension code mandatory for the statistical account. I can also look at the statistical account balance. And I'm going to view by month. And I'll also view as the balance at date. Now, this would show me the total of the statistical account, in this case, total employee headcount as of each of these months. And of course, I can drill into this to see the entries that are making that up. Let's take a look at the other statistical account of office space. And if I drill into this, I can see the balance is 2,820. Looks like meters squared. So I can see that there are some entries on 226, 326, and 416 to establish the main building offices for the different departments. And then I can see there are additional entries as well for expansion and closing of certain spaces. The reason I wanted to kind of just review and point out these statistical accounts is because we will see that we do have the ability to incorporate statistical accounts when we look at our allocation accounts. So next, let's take a look at those allocation accounts, and I'd like to spend a little bit of additional time exploring different options for this functionality because there are lots of different ways that you can use it. In Business Central, I'm in the page allocation accounts. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with the last one, which is phone expense. And I can see that this will be phone expense by division, and it's an account type of fix. So if I go into this allocation account, I can see that I've assigned the number and name. I've used the account type of fixed, meaning that we are defining the split based on a fixed share or percentage. For the document line split, I have the option to split the amount or split the quantity, and I've selected split the amount. You will see that when we select the account type of variable in a next example, we're going to have more options in the lines for the distribution. So what I would need to select here is whenever we select this allocation account code of phone, we want that to allocate to this type of account, this account number, and for this share and percentage. So I've selected GL account for this, and I've selected the same GL account for each of the lines because my plan is to split this by division, but everything will post to the same GL account. And I've split it equally, 111, which has calculated the percentage of 33, 33, and 33. You will notice that when we actually test out this allocation, there might be a penny or two difference for rounding just to make sure that the total amount is what you enter. If I wanted to, I could put in different account numbers for each of these lines, and the allocation would work the same way. I can also see that my dimensions are not listed at the line level here, but I can go into the dimensions and I can see that for that first allocation distribution, we've selected the division code of internal. For the second line, we have our division of furniture. And for the third line, we have our division of construction. If I click on this test allocation, we can actually see what that is going to look like when we use this allocation. So if I'm allocating $500, this would be the amounts and you'll notice that one cent of rounding. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into a purchase invoice to utilize this allocation account. And in my lines, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and select allocation account and I can select my phone. Then I'll go ahead and I'll enter my quantity and my cost. And now what I can do is I can do a preview posting. And if I look at my GL entry, I can see that I am going to get my payable to the vendor and I have my allocation split here for the three divisions as indicated in my fixed allocation account setup. Keep in mind that you can also use these allocation accounts in journal entries, but I'm just doing the examples in purchase invoices. Now let's take a look at the employee headcount to distribute cost per department by employee headcount. And this is an account type of variable. In our allocation account, you will see account type of variable and the document line split is still the split amount. 
because I selected account type of variable, I actually have some additional options in my variable account distribution. For the destination account type, I did not select GL account this time. I'm actually selecting inherit from parent, which means whatever GL account is used on the transaction is the account that will be used as the destination account number. For the breakdown account type, this is required because we have set its account type of variable. And I can select to use a GL account, a bank account, or statistical account. So this is why I wanted to cover these first. We will go ahead and use that statistical account, and we're going to use the account of employees to give us that employee headcount. For the calculation, we are going to use the balance at date of employee headcount, and you can see that I've actually added a filter for each line. So we'll look at employee headcount for admin, production, and sales to do that allocation as of the balance of that date. And if I click into this, we can see the department filter of admin. Let's just test out this allocation. So I can see that if I'm going to be allocating $5,000, we don't have the destination account number and name there yet because it's going to inherit from the parent. But we do have that breakdown of the amount, the breakdown of the account balance, and then the percentage. This account balance is the breakdown of the employee headcount. I can also show you that I have assigned dimensions to each of these lines. So when we look at the headcount for admin, we want that to be posted to the Department of Admin. And then you see for the other lines, we have those department codes as well. So we are ready to use this allocation account on a transaction. I'll delete the allocation account that I had here on my purchase invoice. And now I'll go ahead and select a GL account as normal because we've said that the allocation account is going to inherit from the parent. And let's take interest expense. We'll enter our quantity, our amount. And now somewhere I need to indicate what that allocation account is. And I can see if I scroll to the right a little bit, I have this field here. So I'll select employee headcount and I can do a preview posting. Now notice that our GL account has retained the parent GL account, and we have done our split by department code based on the employee headcount from the statistical account as of the date of posting this purchase invoice. Keep in mind that there are many different ways to be able to use these allocation accounts, and I just wanted to give you a couple examples so that you can get familiar with some of the different options. Wow, Carrie, I have to say, I did not pay attention that closely to the allocation new feature. Um, and you did a great job of explaining that in quite a bit of detail. It made me think of a customer that we worked with about five years ago where we just couldn't get it done with what Business Central had. And we built them a, a pretty complicated spreadsheet just to get them through and replaced with this stuff just recently. And they were so, so happy with it. So yeah, and very I cool. I I still only covered probably a small piece of what's possible with that. I could probably talk for an hour about it, but at least just to give some ideas of, of what can be done. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about that as well. Yeah, if you're a consultant who works with accountants um, and you wanna show them something flashy, <laughs> uh -huh. ask them the kind of manual things that they're doing for allocations today and show them how they can replace all that because they probably are and they don't give it a second thought um, but that's a great feature to be able to, um, you know, really just provide more automation for that and make it far more productive. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We've got a little bit of time for Q&A. So if you guys have questions about some of the productivity features that Carrie was talking about in her presentation, please put them in the chat. We'd love to answer your questions. Um, I guess... The one question I have about this, Carrie, is are, are all of these features available now? Are any of them missing or delayed? So I will say that everything I was able to demo on Business Central, which I think was everything, um, is available at least in a preview environment. I think mm -hmm. the most recent things were the $0 amounts on recurring journal lines and the um, salesperson code on ship to addresses. Those might only be in preview right now. And I, I know that about the recurring journals, I think, because I know we don't have it in our environment yet, even if it maybe is available for the upgrade, because 
I just got that error message yesterday and I thought to myself, I can't wait until I don't get this error message again. Um, and yeah. that's what I'm really excited about because I think there are so many users that maybe didn't know how to get around that error message and would just kind of steer clear of using recurring journals. And then yes, the salesperson code on ship to addresses that also was shown in a preview environment. Um, so those are two of the newer ones. Yep. So we're past, um, well, we're into generally availability now. So everybody's just in the window of when they move from version 23 to 24 sometime in the next few weeks or hopefully not months. Um, I know that Microsoft had a little bit of a delay uh, with the release of that, but only by a week or so. So um, if you guys are not seeing that in your environments yet and you don't have a preview copy, certainly um, you know, spin yourself up a sandbox in preview so that you can play with these things on your own. Um, and really kind of prep it for your customers, because I guarantee you that some of those, your customers are gonna be very excited about because they have direct applicability to the job tasks that they do right now. And if you can talk with them first, once their environment updates, you are absolutely going to be creating some value for them in um, why they chose to move to Business Central, right? We don't have to wait for uh, the, the the big upgrades that we had anymore. Um, but as partners, if we can provide value by touching base with our customers when their new release hits their database and prompting them for you know the new things that they could try, um, that's a great way for us to instill value as their partners and to make sure that they're getting that benefit that they signed up for. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when when we think through all these features as well, kind of you alluded to before, we like to think, oh, this might help, you know, this customer that we've worked with, or this could be a good solution for this customer. It's something they've been struggling with. So a lot of these, you know, things that are new features go hand in hand with issues we've experienced in the past. Yeah, absolutely. So while we're waiting for a couple of questions, so if you guys have some questions about these, please type something into the chat because we would love to answer your questions. Um, Central links with external parties. How does that work if they don't have Business Central? So I don't know if it was just my screen, but you cut out for a little bit. I think, would you mind repeating the, the question? Is it just internal parties that can um, read a link that I've shared? Uh, for the sharing a link. So the links can be shared with anyone, but that person that you're sharing them with, whether internal or external, would need to have the proper access licensing and permissions to be able to see that page. So it can be both right. external and internal. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so no questions from everybody. Are y'all getting a little tired? So I think it's time to take a break. So let's take about a five minute break. I am gonna put our QR code up on the screen just for a second for those of you who've been ever so nice to fill in our survey after the sessions. This really does help us to uh, measure what value you're getting out of these sessions and to plan for our next events with things that you're asking for. So please just take one minute to fill out the survey. And then we're gonna give everybody a five minute break just Grab a new drink, stretch your legs a little bit, uh, talk to a coworker or check an email, and uh, we'll be back just in five minutes to start with our next session, which is going to be about adult learning methods for effective training retention boosters. <laughs> 